Well, greetings once again. It's great to be back home in Brisbane after my trip to Canberra and to be back on air sharing with the people of God and the people we love. Before I went away, we started a devotions on the mysteries of God, opening the mysteries of God. And I want to continue on that tonight. And so if you have your Bibles with you, open to Deuteronomy chapter 29. The, this will be one of the key verses for this devotion. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29. And it says this. The secret things belong to the Lord, our God. You see, a secret is something that you don't know or another person doesn't know. When Samson shared his, his uh, question, riddle, uh, to the uh, Philistines, uh, they could not answer it. They had to find a way of deception for him to reveal it. And so a secret is something. Now this is important, especially as believers. A secret, a secret thing or the secret thing belongs to the Lord our God. But listen, but those things which are revealed or which he has revealed belong to us now there's much in the word of god that we don't know but there's much in the word of god that god has revealed to us the plan of christ salvation that was a secret that was hid for thousands of years even after Isaiah prophesied it, it was still 700 years before it happened. But in God's time, he revealed it to mankind. And so many of us, and probably all of us that are tuned in today, have received that secret. And so the revelation here is that once it is given, it is ours. It becomes ours. It can't be taken back. A secret that is revealed becomes ours. So verse 29, reading it again. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may do all the words of the law. So they're revealed not only to us, but then we can pass them on to our children. This happened in the life of Paul. Uh, you know, one of the exciting things that God met Paul on the road to Damascus, as we know. And, you know, he went away for many years seeking God, changing his, uh, his concepts, his theology, changing his idealisms. And he came forth revealing many of the mysteries of the Word of God and of God. And we have them today. They have become ours. You know, it's Pentecost Sunday in 11 days. And so, you know, that, that is a mystery. Well, that was a mystery. But God revealed it on the day of Pentecost. So it become ours. And I'm going to on the... 30th of this month, one day before Pentecost Sunday, we're going to have a Zoom meeting. And if you want to be part of that, just write your email on the side there on the comments and we will uh, link you in and I'll be in touch with you regarding that. But we want to continue our study today uh, on the mysteries of God. You know, the creation of earth and man has caused debate for centuries and centuries. But God wants to open that mystery up to us. The crossing of the Red Seas and many of the supernatural things, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be thrown into the fire. You know, these kind of events, God has shown us. He's opened the mysteries of His power 
and his authority so that these events and realities, healing, restoration, can be ours. Faith, hope, and love. You know, we hopefully will touch a little bit on, on uh, hope today, that faith, hope, and love. You know, people have debated and argued over that. What is faith? Uh, you know, I'm sitting on a chair. I didn't consider uh, whether this chair would hold me. Is that faith? Uh, well, there's a natural faith and there's a spiritual faith. Uh, and we need to learn and understand the mysteries of faith, the mysteries of hope, the mysteries of love. These are mysteries that have been debated, as I've mentioned, uh, over the years. Let me give you an example, but before I do that, let's go to the second scripture, which is our theme, and that's in Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. And in Luke chapter 8 and verse 10, we read these words, and he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables. See, God speaking to uh, the disciples there, he said, to you, I've opened these mysteries. That's to us, born again believers. God has opened the mysteries. Let me give you a story that happened a number of years ago. It's a movie. You can watch the movie. It's called uh, Faith Like Potatoes. And it revolves around a farmer and a preacher in South Africa, Angus Buchan, B-U-C-H-A-N, Buchan, Angus Buchan. Angus was an unconverted, angry young man who had lost his farm because of the black and white situation in Zimbabwe. They moved to South Africa to start again. They bought a rundown farm with no house on it, uh, no water on it, uh, but he began working hard and he was working virtually 18 hours a day to try to get this farm up and running. And he was angry. His marriage was suffering. His relationship with his kids was suffering. His relationship with everyone was suffering. He began to take uh, uh, pills and so forth. Uh, but one day he went to church with his wife uh, and in that meeting, God came and transformed his life. Now, I'm not going to go into everything because we only have 10 minutes, but let me show you one illustration. Yeah, the the, the uh, area where he lived had been in drought for two to three years. There had been no rain. And remember, he has no water on his farms. And so he decides to call all the farmers together. He goes to the largest stadium, a stadium that could seat, I think, 30 to 50,000 people. And uh, he says, I want to hire this st stadium. Initially, they didn't want to give it to him. They said it cost a million dollars to hire this stadium. But eventually they gave it to him. And I believe they gave it to him for virtually nothing. Uh, and so he gathered all the farmers and all the people together and they filled that stadium, 30, 40,000 people in that stadium to pray for rain, to pray that there would be no more fighting between the blacks and the whites. Uh, and uh, so he held this meeting uh, and in this meeting, he challenged the people at this time. He said, step out in faith, uh, go home and plant potato seeds. Now, it wasn't the soil, it wasn't the area for potatoes. They need a lot of water. And in particular, his farm that had no water, but he believed God was saying it. So he began to plow the land up and everyone was trying to persuade him. Uh, even his own bank manager rang him and said, look, if you do this, uh, it doesn't produce. You can lose everything you've got. He said, well, look, I've already started. God has told me to do it. So they began to plow the ground up and all of a sudden the helpers and the workers that he had, the faithful people around him, began to come to help him. And they planted all of the potato seeds and then they waited. No rain. They waited. No rain. Week after week, no plants coming through the soil. Everything said it was a disaster. But you see, he had a secret from God. God had said to him, reach out in faith, 
believe me, plant potato seeds and you will reap. So week after week, he didn't look. He didn't go and test the soil. He didn't go and get, dig up a little bit to see what would happen. He just relied totally on or in faith. And so the time come that it was harvest time. There were no plants above the ground. Everything said that nothing happened. You know, I've tried to plant potatoes and I've done it unsuccessfully a few times. Here it was. And so he's offside and gets the shovel, the pick, the pick and goes over and begins to dig. And, they, and under the soil are these huge potatoes. And as they begin to dig, him and his offsider, all of a sudden the farmers and the crowds come up. Some come to see what was going to happen. Others had their picks and their shovels with them, ready to, to reap a harvest. And on that day, on that day, without rain from weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, without any sign of success, uh, as they dug that field up on that day, they reaped one of the largest harvests that had happened in South Africa of potatoes. Uh, that's a powerful movie, a powerful truth that is brought forth uh, because one man, one man had received the secret of God. One man understood the mysteries of God. All the other farmers, hundreds of them, didn't listen to the word, didn't obey the word, and continued to struggle when there's drought period without a harvest. But, um, uh, but on that day, Angus reaped a harvest because he received the secret of God. Well, that time is gone. Let me give you one scripture. Oh, let me give you a story. We'll start on hope, hope next week. Let me give you a story about myself. As we close today, in Isaiah 54, it says this, Sing, O barren, you who have not bore, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, saith the Lord. Enlarge. Everything says don't do it. See, that was with Angus. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare the length of the cord and the strength of your stake. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabitable. Now go over to... Uh, chapter 49 and in verse 49 and verse 19 it says for your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants and those who swallow you up will be far away the children you will have after you have lost the others up will say again in your ears, the place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. Then you will say in your heart, who has begotten these for me since I have lost my children and am desolate? Go down to verse 22. Behold, I will lift my hand in the oath to the nations and set up my standard air for the people. They shall bring your sons and your daughters and your daughters shall be carried on the shoulders. Now listen, kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their face on the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for you shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Now that word was given to me 50 years ago. And over the years, I have passed the churches, I have started churches, and some of those churches grew to a couple of hundred people, and yet I never saw that. I had visions of it, 
Even one church that we went to that just had 20 people and within 18 months we had 200 people. I began to plan visions of expansion, but never saw it happen. And there was a question, a mystery to me. Why didn't it happen? God has given me the word. God has said that I will have children from the north, from the far lands. They will come in. Why hasn't it happened? Uh, God has said that, uh, you know, that, that, that children will be all over the world. My children will be all over the world. God has said that kings and queens will bow down even before me. And then one day, just not long ago, about 12 months ago, God revealed this mystery to me. And you see, I had set my focus on a church building. I had set my focus on a local church. But you know, over the last 50 years or 49 years, we've been married 50 years this year, but 49 years in the ministry, over the last 49 years, I've traveled the world. I have sons and daughters in America. I have sons and daughters in Africa, in India, all over the world. I have sons and daughters. I have sat down with kings, uh, with, with leadership. Uh, you know, the high commissioner of Zambia is a close friend of mine. You know, and all of a sudden I began to see the mysteries, the secret of that word. And God was saying, Tom, you haven't failed. Tom, you haven't missed the boat. Tom, look beyond and see what God has done with your ministry. And God wants to do that with you as we continue each Tuesday to open the mysteries of God. I try to keep to 10 minutes, but again, I failed. I'm sorry but just I've got to share what's on my heart. It burns in me to get it out. And so again, thank you for listening. Next week, we're going to pick up on hope. I want to show you some revelations on hope that God has given to me regarding the mysteries of God. Uh, on Thursday night, if you're free, don't forget to tune in. And uh, there, we're going to be looking at the church that God is developing, that God is about to release in our society today. Well, God bless. Again, if you want to be part of our Zoom on the 30th, put your email down there or send it to me through Facebook. Love you. Have a great day, great night, wherever you are in the world. And we will speak again on Thursday.